The final wave of Fire Emblem Three Houses DLC is out now. It features a brand new side story called Cindered Shadows and is essentially its own little self-contained story, much like how the different routes split off into different outcomes. In this video we'll talk about exactly how Cindered Shadows works and I have beaten it so we'll explore what unlocks for you in the main story afterwards. There will not be any major spoilers for the side story in this video. First off, if you want to purchase Cinder Shadows, you must first buy the Three Houses DLC Expansion Pass, which costs $25 US. All the DLC comes from the Expansion Pass, I believe, and was released in waves with Cinder Shadows being the fourth and final update. I'll have a link to the DLC website that shows everything that was in the previous waves, but it's mainly cosmetics, and Cinder Shadows is the one big new story content update. It is by far the most impactful DLC since it introduces 4 new characters and 4 new classes, which you can use for your other students. With 3 houses encouraging multiple playthroughs, it's a great way to spice things up. Now once you have the expansion pass and the newest update, you can actually jump into Cinder Shadows immediately. At least I don't think you need to beat the game, but I will say that this DLC has mechanics you should already know from the main story. So I would highly advise only starting this adventure once you have already finished one clear of the game. Moving on, you can find a new side story option on the main menu of the game, and this is where Cinder Shadows begins. It is a side story because you do not continue off of any previous save of the game, and you basically are starting a new game entirely. Selecting this option will prompt you to pick difficulty, select casual or classic mode, and even pick Violet's gender just like starting a new game plus. It will even have its own save files which are in a different tab from the main story. After this you will be thrust into Cinder Shadows which begins after Byleth is already made a professor at the officer's academy. Byleth and the three house leaders follow a suspicious individual to an underground part of Garrick Mock Monastery and are joined by Ash, Linhart, and Hilda as well. In Cinder Shadows you do not pick a house nor do you start from scratch. You will have a set group of characters already pre-promoted into different classes and you won't be doing any teaching for new skill proficiencies. Just like good old Fire Emblem you're going to have to work with what you have. However, our characters also come with abilities and battalions which you can swap around so you aren't locked in completely. The first battle is against our four new DLC characters from the secret fourth house, the Ashen Wolves. Their leader is the Sly Yuri who uses the new Trickster class. Balthus aka the super amazing king of grappling uses the new War Monk class. Happy uses our new Mounted Valkyrie class. Then there is Constance who uses the coveted Dark Flyer class. You can reclass into these new class types in the main story, but we'll get to how to do that in a bit. Now the Cinder Shadows DLC is pretty basic. You get some story, then you have a fight. Then you are able to explore Abyss, which is like exploring the monastery except there's no fishing, gardening, or tea partying. You can run around and talk to everyone in between chapters, and then you can head out into another fight. As usual, you can stock up on new items or weapons, replenish battalions, or forge new weapons in Abyss, but you can also do it before every battle via the marketplace so you won't be caught off guard. That's about as simple as it gets. I finished Cinder Shadows in 8.5 hours on normal, playing somewhat semi-casually since I want to work on this video. I would say if you play casually and listen to all the dialogue, it's an easy 8-10 to 10 hours worth of content. Playing through Cinder Shadows is just one part of this DLC. It has its own ending and once you hit it, there's nothing really left to do in the side story. However, by playing through Cinder Shadows, you unlock the ability to recruit Yuri, Balthus, Happy, and Constance in the main story and you can do so as early as chapter 2. Where are they? Well, they are still in Abyss, which you can also travel to from the monastery. Simply exit Violet's room and make a left and you'll find the Shifty Merchant who will take you into Abyss. In Abyss, you can talk to each of the characters and you'll be able to recruit them into your class. Now, I'm not sure how much of Cinder Shadows you have to beat to do this since I beat it in one go, but it's safe to assume that just beating the entire side story will unlock everything we're going to be talking about in just a bit. An important tidbit is that you can only recruit Yuri, Balthus, Happy, and Constance in part one of the main story, so if you're already in the war phase, you're kind of out of luck. In Cinder Shadows, you also cannot gain any support points, so if you wish to watch support conversations of our new characters, you're going to have to recruit them into your main game, so that is some incentive to start a new playthrough. The other big incentive is getting access to the four new classes. These classes are available at level 20 and work like the other classes where you need a certain level in specific skills to pass. The Trickster class does require a Thief certification though, so you're going to have to make sure you pass that one too. 
Instead of advanced seals or master seals, you're going to need Abyssian exam passes. When you recruit each of our four new Ashen Wolves, they all come with one Abyssian exam pass. If you want more of them, or if you want to get them in the war phase but didn't recruit the Ashen Wolves, then I think they are only available from one place. Please leave a comment if you know another way to get them. This is going to lead us into the next topic which is what you can do in Abyss in the main story. Once you are there, there is a character called the Influencer and he has some things you can purchase with Renown. These 5 things upgrade Abyss and introduce new features. You get a large amount of Renown from beating Cinder Channels so you should be able to afford all of these upgrades. First upgrade is to Inspire Worship. This upgrades the Pagan Altar which originally lets you offer items in exchange for Renown. Now you're going to be able to spend Renown to get items and weapons. In the item section you can find the Abyssian Exam Pass for 750 Renown points. As far as I know this is the only other way to get these passes that I could find. And a secret shop didn't have them nor did the normal item merchant. The next Abyss upgrade is to encourage recycling. This basically lets you use the scrap heap which works similarly to how it did in Cinder Shadows. Every month you can check it out and get some random stuff. The third upgrade is to reduce in prices. Now I'm not 100% sure on this one but I believe this upgrade gets the mysterious teacher to show up. To talk to him you're going to have to do a new quest called learning to teach which basically just tells you to talk to the teacher who is in the inn slash tavern in abyss. Do that and you unlock the mysterious teacher which I don't really know the importance of. I think it just tells you if a unit got RNG screwed for their stats. I don't think this affects any gameplay or anything. Fourth quest is to summon the Wayseer and this opens up another quest. This one is called Divining Destinies and again you just have to make your way to the Wayseer's room in Abyss. Once down there you can use her abilities and she can strengthen support bonds between units for 500 renown. She can also entwine destinies which I believe just means you can for sure secure a paired ending between two characters. However this costs a whopping 10,000 renown so yeah I guess love is expensive. Final fifth upgrade is to organize the shadow library. I was disappointed to find the library not have anything in it in Cinder Shadows but this changes just that. Another quest is required, this one is called Banned Books and you simply just find the list of books in the shadow library itself. After doing this there are finally markers in the library that provide new information so for those that love lore you're gonna want to do this one. I think that's about it for the main DLC content that you can get from playing and beating the Cinder Shadows side story. This update also has some other fun stuff like Anna has her own unique outfit, you can have tea time with Lady Rhea, Byleth can use the dancer outfit in the monastery plus there's an option to change all attire outfits for your class at one time. Some other things I forgot to mention earlier are that Balthus comes with a new grappling heroes relic and Yuri has his own relic which makes the trickster class incredibly fun with its mastered combat art. I'm not sure how to get these in the main story but I have a feeling that they will sort of fall into your hands in roughly 5 years if you get what I mean. After beating Cinder Shadows you also get the crest stones of the 4 ashen wolves and you get a new held item which I won't spoil the name of but holy cow it is crazy. It allows a unit to counter from any distance and it negates effectiveness. You can claim it from Violet's bed along with 10,000 renown. Hopefully this video helped you learn about all the other things Cinder Shadows has to offer besides the side story itself. To get the most out of this DLC you definitely want to start up another playthrough of the main story. Recruiting the Ashen Rose gets you more support conversations and the new classes are a ton of fun if you felt like some students didn't have a proper master class. Just to be clear, even if you are in the war phase you can still visit Abyss and unlock all of its upgrades. That's all I got for now, have fun with the DLC and I'll see you guys in the next video.